how have you learned to hear from God? He said, by making a lot of mistakes. And you know, we're too afraid of our mistakes. Hmm. We don't want anybody to think we've made a mistake. We want everybody to think that we're, we're perfect. And I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with saying I missed it. Yeah. yeah, I think that God would rather have somebody that's bold enough to try than somebody who just sits and does nothing all their life so they never look like yeah. they're wrong. We welcome you to Praise. Today we are in South Florida. It's beautiful. We welcome you wherever you're watching around the world. Our guest is Joyce Meyer, and we're talking about a subject today called finishing well. <laughs> okay, that's a big subject. How do you wanna, <laughs> how do you wanna set the hook for uh, finishing well? What's our big subject here? Well, I think what we could start with is to say, it really doesn't take much character, much effort, much of anything to start something, mm -hmm. but there's always a middle before you get to the end. <laughs> And usually it's in the middle when people give up. And I was really affected many years ago by John 17, 4, when Jesus said, Father, glorify me now, for I have completed the work that you have given me to do. Hmm. And actually, when I read it, I started to cry. Hmm. And I thought, God, that's what I want to do. Hmm. I want to finish. I don't want to just start. I don't want to give up in the middle. I want to finish. And, you know, this can be anything from owning your own business to a worldwide ministry to cleaning out the closet. Right. You know, it can be a very practical message, not just, you know, a, a real spiritual one. I mean, for example, how many, if we just ask the audience, how many pieces of exercise equipment do you own that you never use? <laughs> they say that 60% of people who have a gym membership never show up. Oh my mm, goodness. Been there. And so it's like <laughs> the, and the only way we can finish is if we count the cost before we get started. So I think there's a lot of, a lot of good things to say. You know, a lot of people like us that get asked to speak places and do things, you get to a point, I mean, in the beginning, you're so desperate to do anything, you'll take anything that comes in. But, you know, if, if it works well and you, you have more and more opportunities, then eventually you, have, you can't say yes to everything right. because you kill yourself if you do. And uh, I remember asking Darlene Check one time, how do, you, how do you know what to say yes to and what to say no to? And she said something that has really helped me. She said, before I say yes to anything, I think through in my mind, what is it gonna take for me to do that? Wow. So when you, when you think through how easy it is when somebody says, you know, would you come to my church and preach or, or whatever. Somebody says, can you watch my kids Friday night? You know, whatever it is. You know, I have to think through, okay, I'm going to have air flights. I'm going to need to pack. I need to unpack. <laughs> you know, you're, th there's a lot. You know, you have to think. Count the cost. And, and Jesus actually said, count the cost, the cost of discipleship. The reason why a lot of people never become really, really strong in their walk with God is because they don't want to pay the price to get there. And so there, there's a great benefit on the other side, but there's too many things that people start and never finish. And I think that you just have to make your mind up in the beginning, set your mind that you're not just going to start, you're going to finish. Now, sometimes we start things and we find out, well, it's really not God. And when that's the case, then just say so. I thought it was right. It wasn't God. I'm going to learn from this and go on. Mm -hmm. But I want to see a lot more finishers. Yes. I'm still stuck on the cleaning your closet. I was about to say the closet <laughs> thing is, is, was a word of the Lord. By oh, the yeah, way. that was, yeah, that was yeah, prophetic. I'm, I'm hearing from God. Yeah, <laughs> not to me. To her. Okay. So uh, what we're talking about today is finishing well. So if we, if we finish well, then I think it might be good. Do you mind telling everybody how old you are? I'm 74. Okay. You're 74. You've got a lot of you didn't answer the question. Right now. Do you mind? Did you mind? <laughs> oh, well, I don't really mind. Okay, good. I <laughs> really mind. So, I know something about Joyce. Don't ever park in her driveway and block her car in. Okay, <laughs> never do that. Okay, note to self. Um, okay, so your last book, uh, when we were last together, we did an entire episode on <laughs> Unshakable <laughs> Trust. Yes. Uh, that book is still her current book. It's, it's right now in stores. It's also available. 
uh, by Congress. We're not talking about that as much today, but we're talking about finishing well. So you're 74. You've been married how many years? 50. 50 years. <laughs> So you get, that's a badge of honor in regard to uh, Finishing well. getting to uh, address this subject yeah. and, and to mean it. The Bible definition of 70 years, I, I wrote a, a card for my dad when he turned 70. And I, and I went through and I did a, a real study on 70 and that God promises 70 years to the righteous and this right. and that. There's so many, so many great things about 70. And when you get on the other side of that 70 number, we should listen. Okay. Right. So how do you want us to listen, the viewers to listen? And we're talking about everything from cleaning out a closet, doing a garage project, you know, uh, losing weight. Uh, by the way, you know that a personal friend of mine uh, invented the gut buster. Oh yeah. And there are 20 million of those in some people. Probably sitting around you know, in sitting in, you know, the garages and attics. <laughs> yeah, gut busters. Oh my God. Hello, Rick. Nice to <laughs> see. I haven't thought about you in a while. Um, and so basically, uh, we're talking about a big subject, but you get to address it because you are in this stage of finishing well. Right. So please, uh, how do you want to, how do you want us to just kind of Obi-Wan Kenobi us for a while, so. Well, you know, I think in order to even talk about finishing well and what it takes, what's really required, you have to have been doing something for a period of time. So yes, by this point, 42 years plus teaching the Word of God started in the basement of my home. Now I have a amazing building all paid for and offices all around the world and you know started with a handful of people and you know now i get to be on television all over the world in 90 plus languages and so mm -hmm. yes i'm i'm living my dream i wouldn't even know how to tell anybody what it's taken that's why when somebody <laughs> judges me you just want to say it's almost funny yeah. it's like <laughs> I mean, it all, it's like you don't even have a clue what you're talking about. Yeah. You, you, you look at something now and you want to judge it and have an opinion about it, and you have no idea what it's cost me Come on. to be yeah. where I'm at now. Yeah. Judging and, your harvest. Yeah, judging Just, your harvest. Judging judge your, your fruit. <laughs> judging you because you got a nice outfit or, you know, you got a nice home or, or whatever the case might be. It's why do we feel that we have to have an opinion where we have no responsibility. Wow. Right. I mean, everybody's right. so full anyway. That, yeah. That's another whole subject. You got a little but, fired up about yeah. that. There's a little spark but in your eye there. I hate to see, I hate to see people do it to anybody. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's so easy to judge somebody when you don't know their heart. You don't know anything. Anyway, to get from where I started, having been abused by my father and my mother abandoned me in the situation, knew what was happening, didn't do anything about it. And uh, when, you, when you talk about, you know, trusting God, I was born again when I was nine years old. I received Christ in a little church when I snuck off to church with some relatives because my dad wasn't doing any church. And uh, I prayed that God would deliver me and get me out of that situation, but he didn't. He didn't get me out of it. And uh, the thing is, is, you know, God gives authority to people. And my mom and dad had authority. And as long as they were not going to make the right decisions, God gives people choice. He's not going to make them make the right decision. But when I got old enough to put, make my choices and put my trust in God, then nobody could keep me from having victory got it. because I was making my own choices. Yeah. And that's so important for people to remember that are hurting. You know, right now, maybe you're in a situation you can't do anything about. But listen, when you start making right choices and you start consistently doing what God wants you to do, you are on your way up. And I think any time that you're going to finish well, you have to have consistency. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I believe that, I mean, I've done thousands and thousands of meetings, everything from, I remember one meeting, we had nine people and I took five of them with me, you know, <laughs> to. <laughs> I brought five of them. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I know what it's like, you know, to even feel like you're preaching to the dead, you know, because some places you go, I mean, they're just like, yeah. and they're like, oh, please, could you just smile? Could you do something? <laughs> and so, yes, we have lots of victory now, 
<laughs> but it hasn't always been that way. And we had to go through those things and keep on going. <laughs> I've got you laughing. Yeah, yeah I'm now. a little bit tickled, but go ahead. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll chill. <laughs> Wait, you got a story to share? <laughs> uh, well, look, the, uh, <laughs> the, the idea that you are... Um, you took a level higher in your intensity <laughs> when you when you started talking about this subject. This is really something that's meaningful. You finishing well is what we're talking about, uh, but the idea that this consistency thing that you're going through. Okay, continue. You had nine people in the car. You brought five with you. Go ahead. Well, it, it's like I'm not sitting here today because I've made one or two right choices. Correct. You know, I had such an unbelievable mess in my life just like a lot of people do that are watching right now. I mean, uh, maybe you're a physical mess. You know, maybe you need to get your health in shape. Maybe you, you could be, be a lot of things. Maybe your home is a mess and, and you look at it and it's easy to just want to give up. But the thing is, is you don't have to conquer it all overnight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You start and you do one thing and then the next day you do another thing and then you do another thing. Here's what I like to tell people, Matt and Laurie. You didn't get in a mess by doing one thing wrong. Yeah. Right. And you're not going to get out of the mess by doing one thing right. Right. I will never forget a woman who came to me. She came up to the altar at the end of a meeting and she put her hands on her hips and she said, I want my money back. <laughs> and I thought, what in the world are you talking about? I mean, I guess she'd given a few offerings and she said, I want my money back. I said, honey, what are you talking about? She said, I've been doing what you said for two weeks and nothing has changed. <laughs> I thought, you poor dear, <laughs> you, you have no idea what it's going to take. But it, it's not that it's all hard. Right. You know, God never puts more on us than what we can bear. Right. I just want people to understand that you cannot have victory. You can't finish anything if you're going to give up when it gets a little bit hard. Right. Mm -hmm. Whether it's somebody judging you or criticizing you or, or people that you expected to be there for you, abandoning you when you really needed them, we are going to go through things. Yeah. There are things that Jesus did for us that we will never have to do again. Thankfully, we don't ever have to pay for our own sins. Yeah. He's taken care of that. But if he was rejected, we're going to be rejected. He said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. So it's part of getting from where you start to where you finish. You know something the bottom line is, is people that you would like to be happy for you when you succeed are not always happy wow. for you. Yeah. Many times, they're just jealous. I mean, that's the bottom line. They're just jealous. And they want what you have, but they don't want to do what you did to get it. Right. Wow. wow. Um, let me ask a, a, a question that I want your experience on. You have, you have said the statement, don't give up. You, you know, you, you got to make a bunch of right decisions, not one. You don't end up with a worldwide ministry uh, by making one right decision. It's a string of them. But at the same time, you've been very circumspect to say that sometimes you get down the road and something wasn't God's will and you give yep. up. When have you, have you ever confused one of those two things that you're not doing something that's God's will, but you don't want to give up on it because you know, when do you give up? When do you don't? Is there a story in there of something that you can help us understand yeah. when to bail on something yeah. or when to stay consistent so that we can finish well? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, when you can learn what God's grace is on and what it's not, that is one of the best ways to know whether or not you're in the will of God. Okay. I want to hear a lot about that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, for example, Bringing anything through to the finish is hard. There's no doubt about it. You've you got to be determined you're not going to give up. Right. But there are things that if God doesn't do them, then you're not going to have a choice. I mean, you, there's certain things that, you know, like for me in the beginning, when I started, I had to have some kind of child care, some kind of, I had to have somebody that's going to come along and say, uh, you know, I feel like there's a call in your life. I want to help you with your kids. I didn't have any money to pay them. You know, I didn't even really have anybody proper to ask. And so when I look back, not only do we need God to provide for us financially, but we need God to provide lots of other things hmm. in our life. And I was just telling my son coming over here, I am amazed at the amazing people that work for us that have been there 
-hmm. 15 years, 20 years, yeah. you know, nobody's been there as long as me, but some have been, you know, really close. And it's amazing when somebody is that committed to somebody else's vision. Yes. Wow. So God has provided those people. Yes. Yeah. He, he, but if he didn't, I couldn't do what I'm doing. Yeah. So, for example, sometimes something's not working, not because it's not God's will, but it's not God's time. We're very good about getting ahead of God. Yeah. And so, which is understandable. You know, we, we feel something in our heart. We're excited. We want to do it. We know it's God, but it just doesn't work. I tried to go on television a few years before God put me on television. Mm. <laughs> so I uh, was going to take a few of my lady employees and I was going to do a talk show. And we rented a little studio in St. Louis, got on a couple of free cable channels. What year do you think this was? Oh, it's been at least, well, I've been on television 20, I mean, it's probably been maybe close to 30 years ago. 30 years ago. Something okay. like that. And um, so I was going to do this little interview thing. And it's really hilarious because I'm just not good at interviewing. <laughs> I'm just not. I ask a question and then I won't let the person I ask the question to answer. <laughs> and so, I would much rather hear you talk anyway. <laughs> so, honestly, I mean, that's not my strong. Now, they've taught me and I've learned and I can pull it off decently now. But I mean, if, if I ask somebody a question, I didn't like their answer. I was really great at rerouting it and getting it around to, to, to what I thought. <laughs> and so uh, it, it just, I wasn't, I wasn't any good at it. You know, I had these five people sitting there, but I didn't let anybody talk but me. <laughs> and then... In, <laughs> Do you have any of those old tapes that we could that we oh, can show? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> if we can find them, trust me, I want to see them. Okay, good. I mean, even now with my current show, when we started occasionally doing an interview guest, mm -hmm. I mean, we had people writing in and saying, "Will Joyce let the guest talk?" <laughs> and so finally, my staff had to come to me, my son and our the, the head of our TV and. and he said, we need to talk to you about something. <laughs> well, at first I got my back up, you know, it's like, well, don't, you know, don't, don't tell me how my to talk. I, I know how to talk. My show. <laughs> I didn't know this was going to be comedy. Hour. I didn't either. <laughs> so they had to talk me off the wall, you know, and get me down to where I would listen a little bit. And uh, so I've learned how to do it better. You know, I can actually, I'm not doing too good on this show, but I can do it better. <laughs> But you're interviewing me. I'm not interviewing you. Aren't you glad? <laughs> so anyway, I, so I went on, I was trying to do the show. It wasn't working. So in six months of being on TV, we got one piece of mail. <laughs> <laughs> and there was no money in it. <laughs> so it wasn't going to help anything. Oh we'll pay you to be quiet. <laughs> Nobody wanted the CD. Nobody, you know, six months. And so... Finally, my lightning fast brain said, this is not working. So the thing is, I have a tear running down the side of my face. When you try that hard to make something work and it's just not working, that's probably a good time to say, you know, this may not be God. <laughs> and so I was just way ahead of myself. Now I'm on television all over the world, but then I couldn't get one piece of mail in six months. Wow. Because... I just, it just wasn't the right time. And so I think that's one of the ways that you can tell if something is right or not. I mean, what happened then when it was right? Because it's right now. So what, what was the change? What do you okay. think, what do you think happened that, that's a great example. Okay. What, what happened? Well, first of all, my husband went out and bought a, a TV camera, which I think I remember at that time, it cost like $17,000. Well, I was so mad. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah. You don't talk to me about that. Why did you do that? We don't we don't have that kind of money. And he's like, I just I just felt like that every time you do a teaching, of course he thinks I'm a good teacher, so he's like, We're losing it. And I, I don't know what we're gonna do with it, but I feel like we need to capture it mm. for something. Yeah. So uh I was like, not ever gonna go on TV because I thought I failed at it. You know, it was just like I'll just stay on radio and keep traveling, doing meetings, but I won't go on TV. So one morning, Dave was um, shaving, getting ready to go to the office, and I was trying to get out of the house, and he, after a little bit, he was in there by himself, and he said, 
come here, I need to talk to you about something. So I said, Dave, I'm in a hurry. I get to the office. Can we talk later? He said, nope, I need to talk to you now. And, and God actually spoke to him in a very clear way. And he was just like, you could tell that he was really moved and even shaken. Mm -hmm. And he said, God said, I want you to go on television. I've prepared you all this time. I want people to get that. I've prepared yeah. you all this time. Wow. Preparation comes before promotion. Yeah. And so we need to take the time to let God prepare us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're ready. Mm. We think we're ready. But even sometimes people that are going to need to work with you aren't ready. Right. You know, so there's a whole lot that God has to do before we can go do this thing that we want to do. So Dave was over all of our finances and he did a great job at it. And of course, he's having this little communication with God and he's like, well, we can't afford that. And he actually saw something in the spirit. He saw a hand on a water faucet and he said he felt like what God showed him is I've got it turned up this far, enabling you to do what you're doing now and I won't have any trouble turning it up more, mm -hmm. enabling you to do the rest of what I'm asking you to do. Now, it is so hilarious because when, when we started to try to go on television, we did not know you needed a TV producer. We, ha we did not know one thing about what we were supposed to do. That's why telling these stories is so great because sometimes God calls people to do things that don't know what they're doing. Right. Wow. And if you take it a step at a time, talk about a walk of faith and a journey of faith. I always tell people you step out and you find out. Mm -hmm. And if you step out and it don't work, then you take a step back and you reroute. And so, I mean, this is just the way God works. He, he like somebody had a, a television producer had applied for a job with us a few months before, and we thought, well, we don't need that. We're not on TV. And we just stuck it in the back of a file somewhere. And so then when we started realizing we needed one, then we called him and he became our first TV producer, Matt and Laurie. The first show that we did on TV <laughs> was done in a little ballroom. I don't even remember where it was at now. I mean, it was little. And the place was in such bad condition. We didn't have any money. I mean, we, the, the ceiling tiles were falling down. <laughs> and it was a real low ceiling, which is lousy for yeah. TV. We had one camera, and our backdrop was a blue shower curtain. Oh, you had a shower curtain, too. But you know what happened? That first day, 125 people called. Wow. <laughs> wow. And so when it's God, it doesn't matter what you don't have if you have Him. Yeah. And if it's not God, it doesn't matter what you think you do have. Right. If he's not for it, it's not going to work. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> this That's is really cool. an interesting moment here <laughs> yeah. because, first of all, when you showed the little word picture of God having his hand on a faucet, um, I felt like there were people in the viewing audience now that mm -hmm. I'd love for you to pray for them. Okay. That, they, that God's got a hand on a faucet we're talking about finishing well, but we're talking, we're kind of in the mid ground here. This is when, you know, Joyce started. And, and by the way, I remember uh, doing lighting for you at Melody Land Christian oh Center <laughs> back in the early 90s when you would travel to Southern California. So that would have been early in your TV ministry. And I did lighting for you. Oh I met gosh. you the first time in, in Melody Land Christian Center, yeah. uh, which isn't even there anymore. That, that whole church is a parking lot now. What was the pastor's name there? Ralph Wilkerson. Can I tell in you a his funny 90s, story? Um, yeah. Still alive. Yep. Yeah. And when I was preaching, uh -huh. he was sleeping. Ah! <laughs> and, and when everybody would clap, he'd wake up and go like this, and, and he'd go back to sleep. <laughs> Maybe he was 90 then. <laughs> <laughs> and he was only 60 then. So, um, okay, so I just, I just, Sorry, it, it, it really felt like um, that you tapped into something that our viewers, sure. there's a hand, God's mm -hmm. hand on a faucet and they think they can't go to the next level, but they could right? Mm -hmm. uh, if God's in it. Just pray for those folks and talk to them for a minute about. Well, first of all, remember what I said about stepping out and finding out. The thing is, is you don't want to start by jumping off a cliff. Hmm. You don't want to get this idea, well, I've heard from God and boy, 
I'm just going to go for it and God's going to make it happen and God's going to pay for it. You, you, you take a step and you see if it works. Hmm. And if it does, then you take another baby step. And if that works, then you take another baby step. Don't ever, ever be afraid or embarrassed to say, I thought I heard from God, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. I think people make such a big mistake when they've said God told me to do something and then it turns out it wasn't God and they keep trying to make it be God. Mm -hmm. It just ends up making a big mess. But I just want to tell you that I believe that God has something wonderful for each of us to do. It may not be ministry, but God has something wonderful for each of us to do. And so I'm going to pray for you right now that you will be able to discern the difference in when God's grace is on you for something and when it's not. But if, if, if God is showing you, look, I'm in this, it may take longer than you think, but I'm in this, then I want you to know that where God guides, He always provides. Amen. He will make it happen. Just be patient. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that everybody here who's out in the middle of something and feels kind of lost, they're not sure if they, can, if they should go back, if they should go forward, but they don't want to stay where they're at. First of all, I pray that you would help them to discern when your grace is on them mm -hmm. and for them to be willing to take baby steps. And if they take a wrong step to step back, there's no shame in that. I pray that they'll understand that you can provide in a million different ways, ways that we would never, ever expect. And I thank you, Father, for giving them peace and helping them to never quit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, the thing that you said just a moment ago is super important, that God eventually, when you were on television and it was working, and it's still working many, many decades later now, uh, but God was preparing you. So the preparation was even the failure was a part of oh, the preparation. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So that's part of it. You can't just walk that. You can't walk away. You personally, that's your story. You had failure, then success when the timing was right. That's a, I just a read a book recently by Dallas Willard about how to hear from God. And actually, I've read it two or three times. Great book. And uh, he said, when people ask me, how have you learned to hear from God? He said, by making a lot of mistakes. Mm. And you know, we're too afraid of our mistakes. Hmm. We don't want anybody to think we've made a mistake. We want everybody to think that we're, we're perfect. And I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with saying I missed it. Yeah. Mm. You know, I think that God would rather have somebody that's bold enough to try than somebody who just sits and does nothing all their life so they never look like yeah. they're wrong. Beautiful. And uh, you know, there, there's so many aspects to making it to the end of something. and. One of them, Matt, is something that you and Laurie actually have been doing. And that is, as you go along, you have to be willing to change. Wow. Anybody who won't change will get left in the dust. Wow. You really will. And we had a situation in our ministry about 10 years ago where we started noticing that everybody in the crowd was my age. <laughs> There were no young people. <laughs> there was only people my age and, and older. Well, you know, if, if you don't bring new people in, I mean, what happens when everybody else is gone? So I realized that we weren't reaching. Something was, was not right. Things were starting to decline. And it's really important to me that I finish. You know, people ask me if I'm ever going to retire, and I honestly... I, I have never figured out how you can retire from a call in your life. Wow. I mean, I've thought about it. Yeah. But I'm not, how do you say to God, well, I quit? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, <laughs> it's right. different if you get to the point where you can't do something. Right. And you know that God's finished with it, then that's a totally different thing. But I want to finish and I want to do everything that God is giving me to do. And you're talking about unshakable trust. I trust God for that. Amen. I trust God to still be able to be doing this. I want to be still helping people in some way until I draw my last breath. Yeah. Mm. That's what God has called me to. But 10 years ago, uh, first of all, our son, who was then like 26, certainly not old enough or had the education to come on and be the CEO of a ministry. <laughs> but 
the person we had was no more. And we really felt like he was supposed to do it, which wow. doesn't make any sense. But we felt like he was supposed to do it. And, now, you know, our other son has worked for us for a long time. He heads up the world missions. But we needed somebody with, with media knowledge. Well, he didn't have the knowledge, but he, he had wisdom. He had discernment. He was great at dealing with people. And he was really young. And so if you knew some of the stories of him trying to get me to change things, <laughs> I mean, hilarious. One day we were in a big meeting, had everybody at the boardroom table, and they were trying to get me to make a decision that I wouldn't have liked. And uh, so we were having our little spell there, and he's talking about his thing. And, you know, so when I got done, I said, now, if you notice, everybody in the room disagrees with me. And he said, well, of course they do. They're all your age. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, he, he, he could say things to me that nobody else could say. Right. right. And because I knew that he loved me, he'd get by with it. One day, <laughs> I mean, I had stuff. I mean, I was like, I'm going to do this my way. And like there were certain colors I didn't like, so I would never let him use those colors right. in the magazine. It's like, I don't like that color. I don't like that color. And uh, he said to me one day, well, did it ever occur to you that God hasn't called you to minister to yourself? <laughs> there might be some other people out there that like that color. <laughs> We've just a long, kind of been through this, haven't we? <laughs> long story short, very long. Uh, we started making changes. Yeah. Wow. And we did things that I didn't care for. Still not crazy about all of them. Yeah. But we're still here. <laughs> right. And we've grown and we have a lot of young people that come to our conferences now. And some of those changes were like things that people my age wouldn't probably like, uh, like we changed our worship teams or the younger, you know, the, the people that come with, did you comb your hair this morning? Why is it going in eight directions? You know, it's like, <laughs> and, and, you know, jumping around a lot. And I'm used to hymns and, you know, they're doing all kinds of other things. And then we have the fog machines. You know, I still can't figure out why it gives you ambiance to not be able to see the people. <laughs> I, I, I don't get that. But all I know is we have made a lot of changes and they have all made things better. Right. And I'd, I'd like to just say something, <clears throat> even in your behalf with some of the changes you've made and probably will still need to continue to make. Um, usually people that have come up with you don't like the changes. Hmm. They, they don't want anything to change. They like it the way it is. But we have to realize that most of us that are at this point in our walk with God, we've got our relationship with God. We're born again. We're going to heaven. We need to stop trying to just please ourselves. Wow. Yeah. And we need to care more about the younger people and the people that aren't saved and try to get them interested. Now, here's the thing. We did not change our message. We did not change our morals. Right. But we did tidy up the package a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and we made it something that maybe a younger person would open. Yeah. Maybe somebody from a different denomination would open. There you go. There you go. So there are certain things that maybe I would have done in a meeting 40 years ago that I would not do now. Not because I don't think it's right, but because I might minister to my stream, mm -hmm. but I'm going to scare the tar out of these other people mm -hmm. who don't have a clue what's going on. Right. And so I compliment you, and I want to do it on air, for making the changes that you have made. And I'll tell you, when you make changes, there's always going to be people that aren't going to like it. Hmm. Always. And there's always going to be people that maybe can't go with you hmm. to the next level. And I, I remember very well John Maxwell, a great teaching he does about the law of the lid and how sometimes a person that helped you get to here hmm. and was great. They did a phenomenal job. They're important to you. You love them. They're awesome. But they can't yeah. get you. To hear. The lid. And you know, probably one of the hardest things that I ever had to deal with in my life was when I first started, we just hired a dozen good old guys and good old girls that, you know, friends of mine that went to church with me that just would work their heads off. And, and it was good in the beginning. It was like a mom and pop organization. But when we started needed TV producers and 
media specialists and, and things like that, we had to have another, we had to have people then that had more experience in those areas. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was the hardest, I mean, gut-wrenchingly hard yeah. to have to tell somebody who's been so faithful and so amazing that I just feel like it's a new season. Yeah. You know, that frightens people and, and, and I'm very loyal and so in some cases I let it go way, way, way too long because I didn't want to hurt anybody. And really in the long run you end up hurting people worse. Yeah. Are you saying in this entire section here of this broadcast that finishing well requires change? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, even the way that I used to dress, Matt. I mean, everything had rhinestones on it. My earrings were long enough to hit my shoulders and you know, it just that was good for them. But I didn't realize that God could anoint denim. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, yeah. I, I thought you could only have an anointing if you had on a three-piece suit for yeah. Dave and, yeah. you know, decked out to the max. And I'm still probably more inclined to go a little bit to the other side. But at our women's conference this year, which is, is now past, we had a sparkle and shine night and they wanted everybody to wear something a little sparkly or shiny. I could not find one thing in my closet <laughs> that even had a rhinestone on it. And I went back to them and I said, it took you five years to get me to clean my closet out and now you want me to go Where find something. Stuff? <laughs> And See, where are those St. John's? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man, yeah. I had a closet full of them. <laughs> when I go back and look at some of the stuff, I'm like, oh my gosh. And so you, we got to realize that yeah. the world is changing. Yeah. And in many instances, it's not changing for the better. Yeah. But the people that need the most help are not going to buy into some of that. Like I said, you don't change your message. You don't change your morals. I mean, I hate it when people want to say it's okay to sin because it's the 21st century. It's like the Bible is always the Bible and God's not going to change his morals. But it doesn't, it, it hasn't hurt me to put on clothes that maybe don't exactly look like I'm 74. Right. I'm not trying to look 20, right. but I try to dress in good taste. But we, I think it's important that we are willing to make some changes to relate to people that maybe don't get it just the way I'm used to putting it out. Yeah. I remember uh, being impacted by Erwin McManus saying, I don't do my service at my church for the people that are in the church. I do it for the ones that bypass the church and are still out there that's on the exactly sidewalk right. and never came yeah. in. And that's one of the reasons we put Mike Huckabee back on the show, trying to get those kind mm -hmm. of you know, viewers, the right. people that wouldn't normally go to TBN, we're trying to get others to stop now and bring in some changes Excellent. to our broadcast. Yeah, and you know, TBN, geez, 44 years now has been spreading the gospel around the world. You've been a huge, a huge part of it. But even the some of the ones that that helped start TBN, and you know, we've we've lost them. But one of the big deals was that we took our Praise the Lord program and and cut it down to praise. Right, yeah. So they hey, well, the just, Lord right off there. We've yeah. just fallen off the wagon and we've gone secular now because we, well, we just went back to something mom and dad did years ago. They cut it down for praise around, around TBN. When we talk about the Praise the Lord program, we call it praise. Just thought we'd revamp it a little bit, but, you know, but we've taken the Lord out. But we've lost <laughs> dear friendships over that, right, yeah. you know, just of the older, not, but you know what, I do think that, that even our generation is, is maybe better at even the older generation adapting to our, ki our kids, I, I think, I believe, because the hairstyles and the, you yeah, know, right. and, and just um, relating better to the kids. We're at the, we're at the place where we've kind of just, you know, turned TBN 2.0 here. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not, not super young, you know, I'm yeah. 54, but I'm looking, we're even looking at our kids saying, okay, you guys don't need to be redoing it again. Let's just right. get it the way you are. <laughs> <laughs> right. You want it for your generation we're, we're, we're and trying a, to. We're doing a little better job setting up the Hopefully. next generation right. 
so that they don't have to make radical changes. Right. That's, so That's we're, good. We're, That's we're good. trying to look beyond ourselves because my parents' generation, who were your senior by another 10 years or so, um, they were going to see the coming of the Lord. So it, yeah. it you know, was, that was too, the end of the was, game. Yeah. Was, so yeah. the idea that they were the last generation, they were very much like that. And so a lot of things needed to be changed in our generation. Not so much uh, will have to be changed. And I think that's one of the lessons that you're teaching us right now on yeah. finishing well. So we've got about 15 more minutes left. I just want to say that uh, if you just tuned in, Joyce Meyer has been our guest all hour, Unshakable Trust is her latest yeah. book. The 800 number that has popped in and out during this broadcast is for you. Just your latest book. We did a whole hour on that on another broadcast. Uh, we're here in South Florida. Uh, this is a, um, a real ocean. That's, <laughs> that's a legitimate ocean. That's the Atlantic Ocean. It's beautiful today. We're here in the South Florida area and uh, the place where Dave and Joyce call home. How so. How has, has your message changed, for a lack of a better word, to the younger generation? Well, for one thing, and, and we did this, uh, we've done this before, and we're actually doing it with some other books right now. We're going through and updating the language. Really? You know, like things that happened when we were back in the, the heyday of the era that we were in, I mean, you use terminology that doesn't even make any sense to people right. now. Right. And so to leave that, so we changed some of that. I changed a little bit of just maybe getting rid of some of our... Uh, Christianese. Christianese, you know, uh, even like a pet thing to say to everybody back then when they were hurting is, well, just praise the Lord anyway. Mm -hmm. And I remember my aunt who was a Baptist when my uncle died, <clears throat> A girl that worked for me came to the funeral home out of respect for me. And when my aunt was talking to her about everything that she was going through, well, you know, just praise the Lord anyway. Well, my aunt was so offended hmm. because first of all, she didn't even understand that. Yeah. yeah. And so we, we have to be careful about all of our little phrases hmm. that make sense to us that don't make sense to anybody else. So that's one of the things, you know, I did change the way that that I address them, but as far as my messages, I still teach the same thing, exactly the same thing. But uh, I mean, there's there's things like okay, the word prosperity just got to the point where it just made so many people so mad yeah. because there were excesses. Yeah, there were, it, you know, any teaching, any movement of God almost always gets to be excessive in some way, but the mistake we make is throwing out the good part right. with the part that you want to keep. So right. I rarely use that word now. Mm -hmm. I still believe that God wants to bless people, but I've learned along the way that He doesn't want to give you more than you can handle. Right. He doesn't want to bless you with something beyond your level of maturity. Uh, he looks at what are you going to do with your blessings? Are going to use them to be a blessing to other people? So I might use the word blessings now instead of that word. I mean, that's just one example mm -hmm. that I can I give you. Mm -hmm. And do you understand what I'm saying? I it's totally like, understand. You know, you just, you kind of, don't, don't be saying stuff that nobody understands. Right. Or even things that they might be offended by that you don't, you don't see as offensive because you got it, but you got it 30 years ago. Right. And now today, Nobody gets it. Got it. So that's one of the things. Yeah. Joyce Meyer is teaching us about finishing well. What else do we need to know? We got about 10 minutes left. Well, I think that to me, and I've got a sign like this in my bathroom, never, never, never give up. Mm -hmm. and, and I can honestly say that that has probably been one of my strong areas. I'm just really, really bullheaded when it comes to I am not going to quit. Mm -hmm. I hope it's easy, but if it's not, I'm not going to quit. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> Paul said, don't faint in your mind. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, if you ever want to get to the end of anything, whether it's cleaning out your closet, exercising, losing weight, you, you, have, to, you have to have the mindset. This is not all going to be easy. I think a lot of times people aren't realistic. You know, in Luke 14, it says, count the cost. 
Jesus said, who starts to build a building without counting the cost to see if he's got what it takes to finish. Otherwise, he's just going to look foolish. And so back to what Darlene Check said to me about, I think through what it's going to take. Okay, it's very easy for me to declare that I'm going to go on a diet on Sunday night after dinner. <laughs> but what, <laughs> what happens by Tuesday afternoon when my stomach is yelling at me and I feel like I'm going to starve to death? Mm -hmm. You know, it, so you got to know going into things mm -hmm. that it's not always going to be easy. Okay, my little walk, all right, that I take every day. Well, it's been a long time since I've had that walk here in Florida. I've been in my city and was actually even in Utah for a while where the weather is just beautiful every morning and no humidity. I mean, you could run 10 miles and wouldn't even sweat. At, at our home, it's been a little bit cooler than normal. So I come down here and I'm going out to take my walk today and I walk out the door and it's like, <gasps> <laughs> can I even breathe? And so no, that's what I said this morning, I can't hardly breathe. So by the time I walked a mile and a half, I was like sweating and pain. You know, I got to about three miles and I did something I never do. I had to find a park bench and sit down for a minute. I was just like, my gosh, it is so yeah. hot. And so I ended up finishing at about 4.5 miles, which is still a little less than what I would normally like to do. But so the bottom line is, is in Utah, I was comfortable. Uh -huh. Here I was very uncomfortable, but I did it anyway. Yeah. And I'm going back out again tomorrow. So whatever it is, you, you got to figure that it's not always going to be likable. It's, I mean, that's like walking in love. You know, we pray, oh, God, help me love the unlovely. And then the first unlovely person you get around, mm -hmm. you're like, God, why did you put them in my life? Yeah. Oh, well, excuse me. I thought you prayed to love the unlovely. Mm -hmm. So to get from here to where you want to be, you've always got to go through the middle. Like one thing that comes to my mind is like to be in authority, which everybody wants to be in authority, you have to learn how to come under authority. Mm. So I did five years of home Bible studies. I was the only one there. I could do what I wanted to, you know, me and the people that came, but it was my Bible study, my home. Nobody told me what to do. <laughs> so then I went to work at a church when I was 36 and the man that I worked for was 26. And yes, we're still great friends, but we both thought we knew everything and neither one of us knew anything. <laughs> well, we both had a strong personality, but he was the boss and he was a little stronger than me. And I can tell you what, I didn't always agree with him. I didn't always like everything, but man, did God use that in my life to teach me, I mean, a lot of things, like even like not going home and murmuring and complaining to Dave about things that I didn't like at work. And one of the things I remember the Lord speaking to me is it's, it's not who you're talking to that does the damage, Joyce, it's the words you're putting out in the air. Mm. Wow. And so I had to learn to say good things or not to say anything at all in that situation. So a lot of people, you want to do something, you want to do something big, but right now you're under somebody else's authority and you don't like that and your message is, get me out of here. Or even worse, people leave somewhere before God's finished with them. Mm -hmm. And then they never succeed at what they're supposed to be doing because they wouldn't go through the preparation and they we're needed. Ta wow. We're talking about finishing well. Um, we're not talking about catastrophic things like no. divorce no. And, and moral failure no. and having an affair. That's no. not finishing at all. No. That's, that's, yeah. that's right. You know, that's that's basically a, a, a head on collision. Yeah. And many of those people don't don't finish. We're talking about finishing well. So you're talking about learning these things and what got you to the point. You're talking about change. You're talking right. about bullheadedness. Right. Uh, you're talking about <laughs> not giving up, not quitting. You're talking about not letting something permeate. Let me take it. One of the takeaways that I'm getting from this is you're not letting a failure determine uh, even anything, but that was part of my preparation for something else. You have to you, fail your way to success. You mm. <laughs> fail your way to success. So you're talking about a whole bunch of different things. Change was a big part of what we've discussed. Uh, what else is kind of a lesson um, 
the joist that we're sitting with is 74, looking good, sounding good, 90 languages in our broadcast, it's on around the world. Uh, the, the, the accolades could go on and on and on. One of, the, one of the largest television ministries in the world. So we want to hear kind of your fat last, we, we, we want to give you the last five minutes. Just what, what else do you want us to listen to in regard to finishing? Okay, well, I, I'm so grateful for the Holy Spirit because when you first started, I thought, what am I going to say now? <laughs> and he always gives you what he wants you to say. So the thing that I'm thinking about is anybody who wants to do anything sizable, you're going to have to have people to help you. Got it. And you don't have all the gifts. Hmm. You don't know how to do everything yourself. There are people that are smarter in some areas than you are. And we have to have a degree of humility to be willing to listen to other people, hmm. to realize we're not always right. And we need to know how to delegate. You know, somebody who gives somebody a job, a responsibility, but won't give them any authority. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope somebody's getting this because there are people with a ton of potential, but they won't listen to anybody. They're right about everything. They won't give anybody credit for what they do. It's got to be a one man or a one woman show. And I just, I feel that in my heart right now. If you want a place to land, I think you got to realize that you're going to have to have people help you. And if you want people to help you, you got to learn how to be nice to them. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got to learn how to treat people right. Treat them the way that you would want to be treated. We are, nobody is an island unto themselves. We all have gifts. We all have strengths. We all have weaknesses. I can do what I can do, but I can't do what you're doing. And a lot of other people couldn't. But you can't do it either unless you have a guest like me that can come and be on. The, so you need all these people that do all the, the labor, the mechanics. It's like I said to you, I bet it was a lot of work to set this this room up to bring all your equipment and you're like, wasn't hard for me. You know why? <laughs> because we didn't do it. All we had to do was show up. Yeah. But I had to prepare and pray and believe God to say the right things. And so always realize that we all need each other. Yes. Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Yeah. But see yourself according to the grace of God. What I'm good at, I'm only good at it because God has given me the grace to do it. And I need to respect other people's gifts and realize that I need them too. Yeah. Could you have done that off camera to me instead of in front of the whole world? Because I know you were doing that directly to me. Well, I don't know who the word was for. I? <laughs> I did. <laughs> but I told you it was from the Lord. <laughs> One good thing about him is he's always saying, I I need to hire the guys, you know, that I have that can do things I can't do. If I can Absolutely. do your job, then I don't need you. I need you to do stuff better. You need better to do things better than me. I than love I that idea. And to manage them, but not horses. micromanage them. <laughs> exactly. Could you have done that off camera? Is there any <laughs> chance we could have just privately had this conversation at all? <laughs> you know what we have to do sometimes, Matt? Yes, ma'am. We have to let somebody do, do it the way they want to do it, even if we're not that crazy about it. Mm. You know, I've learned like to keep me from going crazy. I have to let a lot of people at my ministry make a lot of decisions. And I don't necessarily love every resource cover I see or every this or that or something mm -hmm. else, but I'm still alive and I'm happy mm -hmm. and I've got my sanity. And if you don't give people any space to be themselves or to even ever make mistakes, they just can't stick with you very long. Yeah. So we're going to have to make changes, going to have to stick with it, not faint in our mind, not quit and give up, learn that you need other people to help you if you're going to do something big, make sure you treat them right, make sure you don't have to be the boss of everything, and uh, just keep on keeping on. That's some good words coming from a, a good woman. would have been a lot more back in the back room. <laughs> that would just, it felt like that would have been more comfortable. I bet you're doing pretty good or you wouldn't be where you're at. <laughs> if the shoe fits, buy it, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I like the buying the shoes thing. I love it. Uh, we are talking about Joyce finishing Meyer. well. You're Joyce amazing. Meyer, you're amazing. Thank you, you for inviting us into your part of the world. Women's lives and men's lives around the world. Thank you. Because Pray uh, that I can finish well. 
Uh, you are you, you are finishing you are well. Amazing. Eight hundred numbers on the screen. That is for Joyce's latest book, yeah. Unshakable Trust. They're all good. That book <laughs> you will need at some point in your life, and I encourage you, you to get picture. it. And it has really a, a, a complete kind of 180 on something. Trust is not some obligation we give or do for God. It is really absolutely 100% uh, a privilege uh, for us to uh, have someone to go to, and that is uh, God, Jesus Christ, in our lives to be able to go to. He is uh, the one we trust. Uh, Joyce, final, final word is yours. Well, I just want to encourage you if you have a dream, bring it all the way through to the finish and realize there's a lot of dream thieves out there. <laughs> Sometimes you're going to have to be lonely if you're going to finish well. Sometimes you're going to have to keep going when nobody is for you except God. But I can tell you what, there is nothing sweeter than the victory. Jesus went all the way through. And I encourage you to pray. Pray that God will not let you be deceived and let the enemy derail you. Be determined to finish what you start. Maybe you need to just start with something small, but it can be a big victory for you. And you know what? Take it one day at a time. One day at a time. God gives grace for one day at a time. I believe you're going to make it. God bless you. This program finished well. We'll see you <laughs> next time. Bye-bye. Friends, no matter what trouble you're facing today, God has already provided the wisdom, courage, and strength you need to stand. For your gift of support in any amount, we're going to send you Joel Osteen's new book, You Are Stronger Than You Think. Please go to tbn.org forward slash stronger than and thank you for being a part of this global television ministry.